Hello, this is Ben. Welcome to my tutorial video on how to assemble the printable, ta printable tack set. This is a set that I designed to be just printed out on paper and then paper crafted together. Um, I have a link to it down in the description, so if you want to follow along, go ahead, follow that link, and just down below. And I will uh, you know, hit pause the video and uh, print that out. You'll need the, the printed set. I have this actually printed on cardstock. Uh, going to make it quite a sturdy paper set. Actually, should be quite playable. Um, so just yeah, I printed out. This is just standard 65-pound uh, cardstock. Uh, feels plenty thick to me. Uh, then you'll also need a scissors and scotch tape, and that is all. So. Firstly, we on the first page here we have the board. Uh, there's the description and instru assembly instructions. Now, if those are not clear enough for you, that's why I'm making this video. Um, so first off, it does say to cut out the board. Print first of all, print it. Haha. -ha. Um, cut out the board, the capstones, and the flats into eight rows, which I will show you here. Uh, so for some reason, my dotted line where to cut out the board did not print, but it's very self-explanatory. You just uh, Go ahead and cut the instructions right off. Voila! Um, I went with the uh, standard inside the squares. You have a 4x4 board for learning how to play. And then if you play on the diamonds, uh, you have a 5x5 board, which is plenty to get anyone started in the game of tech. Um, if you need the instructions out, or the rules and instructions how to play, that's also available down in the description from the official site. So, uh, so we need to cut out the flats into eight rows. Now this is one point which I thought might be confusing, so as you can see, there are a lot of lines on this page and the next several pages. These are rows of flat stones, so I'll cut one of these rows out. There we have it. So that is what I mean by one row of flats. You don't need to cut all of the individual pieces apart. Um, these, I have a lot of lines and uh, you don't want to cut too many of them. So you want to make sure you have a large, small, large, small section for the vertical part. Basically it's very, as I said, it's just these sections all the way across. You cut around all of the outer thick lines. So let me go ahead and cut out all the rest of these. There's this page and the next page and a third page of stones to cut out. These are this is enough stones and a couple extra to play the uh, five by five game. As you can see, moving on to the first page of dark stones, it's a little more obvious where the outlines of where to cut our, out are. All of the dark areas do not cut through. For this step, you want to cut out all of the cut off all of the white border areas. Moving on to the third page of stones, uh, last page of the the set. Uh, I've got two rows of flats, white and dark to complete each of those sets, and then of course the capstone shapes which only cut the outline, do not cut across any of the inner lines. All right, black capstone. So that is most of the cutting done. So now the next step after we have cut them out, and as you can see, the pieces here. Let me get my... So this is what is meant by the eight, eight rows of flats. We have four 
four rows of white and four rows of black. It's much easier to keep them in the rows to assemble them. Um, that way there's less uh, little fiddly like taping and, and stuff like that. So, now we take each row of flats and they just get folded in half. And they're printed, you'd want to keep the uh, printed lines on the outside in general, unless you want them to have a very blank look, in which case you wouldn't really need to print this set out anyway. You could just fold the paper in the same manner. But I'm going to go ahead and just fold, fold this in half. It's a little harder with cardstock than plain paper. There we go. So we got it folded in half, and if I uh, look at it this way, it looks pretty much the same on both sides. Um, that is definitely going to be harder to do the small crease with cardstock than plain paper, but if, as long as I'm careful. So um, we fold the long way, the row of flats in half, and so now this is my open edge here, so I need to tape that edge together. Take your scotch tape or any kind of clear tape, get a piece about as long, a little bit longer maybe, and just stick that right across. Actually, hold on. I learned in my previous assembly that if you find this the small rectangle on the open edge there, uh, you can just tape right along that, uh, that line on the, the smaller rectangle edge. I'll give you a good straight line of tape. And it'll prevent the tape from causing an extra thick edge where you need to crease the paper or cardstock there. So there, that's a piece of tape on there. Just take that, fold it over the other side real snug. Get that to be a real Really, really well uh, pressed on and held down. I want to try not have any extra gaps where the tape will be uh, making it look like there's a hole in a piece. So there we go. That edge is taped together and a little bit of extra, extra just cut off the end. And so then I have to go and do that for all of the pieces. And there we have it. All of our flats have been folded and taped. So now we get to go through and actually separate the individual stones. You can try if you wanted. Um, if, like with the cardstock, I know I'm not going to be able to do this, but basically you could try to open that tube shape back up and recrease along the other line. But I will, I'm going to stick to the instructions I had and I will do that step next each, so I do each individual stone one, uh, one at a time, uh, just to make sure I get a straight line on all those. So first, I would be on, if you're following the assembly instructions on the printout, I'm on step three, cut the individual flats apart, six per row. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to cut those apart on the thickest black lines across, you know, parallel with the open ends. One thing to mention as you're cutting these apart is it's more important to just go in a straight cut rather than like wiggling the scissors to try to make it, you don't, you don't need to get the line perfectly parallel with the other edge, but you do want it to be very straight because this is going to be the easiest edge to stand up your pieces if you're doing setting up um, a standing stone or wall. So it's more important to just 
cut and just go all the way across then to make sure that you're you're perfectly even just do a nice straight cut now, I'm trying to line up with the line on there but once you start going just go for it go all the stones cut and that actually should complete the cutting for for the the entire set the entire project you can see I have my two piles of stones which are still f quite completely flat they do need to be opened up now which is step four open each flat piece at the non taped edges meaning basically squeeze it at the edges open it up like a little little tube like make a, a tube out of it there Open each flat piece at the non-taped edges and recrease along the secondary fold lines. Then shape the piece into an open-ended box. So the secondary fold lines would be when it's completely flat like this. This line on this side and this line on this side. So when you squeeze that open, like so, you want to go ahead and take and then recrease this. This is the most tedious part of assembly, but it does it does turn out pretty well. Alright, so I've got that creased along the secondary one, so now I just go ahead and flatten this out and force that. Right along there. That should do it. This is, as I said, the most tedious part and most, most tedious if you are using cardstock, but you will have a fairly stable set. So there you can see the general shape you're going for. Um, the, the tape will, the tape together edge will be one corner of the box. And so there, there you have it. That'll, that'll sit, that'll stand on edge. Now we just have to do the other 40 of these. There, finished up the black stones. Now, the same for the white stones. And the last one. It certainly takes a while, but it's faster than any other method I have found of making the stones, and it it results in a pretty good, pretty good shape for uh, for playing, and and fits nicely on the board here. So where. So that is step four completed. Step five, the last step, simply says the same process for capstones. Fold them in half, tape the edges, open them up on, on the uh, non-taped edges, and then recrease on the secondary line. So you can see, it may not be immediately obvious if you weren't thinking about it, but there is a center line here. So fold them right across that center line so that the edges will meet up. More important fact that the edges meet up than to be worried too much about the center line. Just because you want that edge to be nice and straight for taping. So as you can see though, folding in half, it landed right across that center line. So then we just take a piece of tape, like we've been doing. They sit nice and flat. So 
then you have this flat piece with the edge taped together. Same story as the, uh, the flat stones. Pop it open and then just crease it right along those other lines, like so. There, and then let me. back up. Turns into a little uh, kind of pyramid shaped oops, pyramid shaped box. As you can see. So it's very nice. Uh, let me do the white one. There we are. That is that completed. The entire set. Now there are, um, I believe, three extra of each color flat stone. Uh, just that's how it came out evenly on the pages. Uh, so lastly, let me give you a couple of just real quick, simple tips about playing with the paper set. So here I've set up a quick demo sort of game just to point out a few things. Firstly, when you're putting the stones down, you're going to want to make sure that you're putting them down not with the open edge facing towards you. Now with the white ones that doesn't make too much of a difference, but you notice here if I take this stack and turn it sideways with the open edges facing towards you and your opponent, it becomes very difficult to tell whether the stone's white or black. So obviously keep the the actual papered edges, not the open edges, facing towards you on your side of the board and towards your opponent on the opposite side. Uh, second thing is, if you're having trouble with a piece standing up on edge, now it's always best to stand them up on an open edge, so that you have an open edge on the top and on the bottom. That's because that's going to be your flattest edge. These edges where you have paper here, that's going to have various levels of deformation. You can see how it's leaning there. Much, much easier for them to fall over than if you uh, stand them on the cut open edges. And lastly is with the capstones, uh, they do fit on top of the stones completely square, but it is, it's close and it's easy to get them kind of like, especially on a tall stack, if you overlap that corner, it's easy for them to, to tumble off like so. So I find that it's just kind of makes it a little bit safer, I guess, or more stable if you just put them on sort of diagonal so that the corners are sticking out straight in each direction. Uh, helps them hold on to that stone below them just a little bit better so that the, the corner doesn't line up like I pointed out and allow the whole stone to tip. So I hope you will all enjoy, uh, if you're presuming you've built one, your paper tack set and that you'll share it with your friends, get them interested in the game, and we will all be excited and prepared for the Kickstarter coming up uh, later in the spring. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video for tax strategy. I will see you next time.